Good morning. On behalf of the Air Conditioning and Mechanical Contractors Association of Australia, our highly specialised members and the BIMMEPOS Project Board, welcome to our online industry briefing. I begin today by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today and pay my respects to their elders past and present. I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here today. My name is Shannon Thomas. I'm the Executive Manager for BIMEPOS, which is a national initiative run by the AMCA and aims to enable consistent digital workflows for building services during the design, construction, fabrication and operation of a building. On behalf of AMCA Australia and all our Australian delegates, we extend a warm welcome to people dialing in from other regions all around the world. Following in the footsteps of last year's Construction Innovation Forum, we are once again streaming and translating this event to our colleagues and friends in Japan. To our audience in Japan, welcome. We appreciate the interest and look forward to continue working together. I would also like to thank and acknowledge the ongoing support of Autodesk and Autodesk Construction Solutions, our platinum partner for this event. I'd also like to extend my appreciation to all AMCA members and the BIMEPOS Project Board for the ongoing support and the opportunity to work on this amazing initiative with amazing people from the likes of AG Coombs, Alice Air Conditioning and O'Connor Services. I'd now like to welcome AMCA Australia's CEO, Scott Williams, to say a few words. Thanks, Shannon. Um, my name is Scott Williams and I'm the CEO of AMCA Australia. Welcome to everybody to this virtual event, wherever you might be, in fact, right across Australia, New Zealand, um, or in fact, around the world. I just want to talk to you a little bit about what's been happening within AMCA over the last 12 months. Um, it's been a really, really busy time. Um, and on the 1st of July this year, all different AMCA entities around Australia uh, merged together to form one united and single national body now known as AMCA Australia. It's a really exciting time. We're only some four or five months into the journey, um, but we've had uh, a tremendous start, um, enormous take up of our membership, uh, a lot of new members, and uh, it's an exciting time ahead as AMCA continues to cement itself after a wonderful 60 years of history in the industry. So just a little bit about the BIM MEPOS uh, initiative. Uh, there's been quite significant change that's occurred, uh, particularly over the last six months, or should I say this year, um, in the lead up to AMCA Australia merging. Um, in around about March this year, um, all subscriptions for BIM MEPOS were actually taken internally and managed by the AMCA team. Um, in addition to that also, that we've had a new website uh, released and also that we're expanding our capability around consulting and training. So uh, in the very near future, there'll be some additional resources to assist uh, in the initiative. The BIM MEPOS initiative will continue to evolve. Uh, it is exciting time ahead. It is a journey for the AMCA Australia as well as we evolve and we, we make sure we're able to deliver to the industry exactly what it needs. I would like in particular to acknowledge Autodesk uh, for being a platinum sponsor of this event. Events like this just would not be possible without the generous and kind support of organisations. So my many thanks to Autodesk. So in closing, um, I hope you enjoy this um, virtual event that's brought to you over the next couple of hours. It should be uh, really, really topical, some great content. And um, again, wherever you are around the world, thank you for joining us today. I'd like to now introduce to you Russell Telford. Uh, Russell is the chairman of the BIM MEPOS uh, board. Over to you, Russell. Thanks, Scott. And uh, again, can I just uh, add to Shannon and Scott's comments? It's great to have over 200 attendees for our forum today and a special welcome to all our Australians who are joining uh, the forum, as well as uh, many from overseas. In fact, we've got 12 countries represented, uh, particular um, acknowledgement of our friends in Japan who are taking today's session through their translation services. Um, it's great to have you on board and following the BIMEPOS initiative, as well as representation from India, Nepal, New Zealand, Portugal, uh, Switzerland, 
Turkey, Thailand, the US and Vietnam. So a warm welcome to you all. Um, it's certainly been an interesting and challenging time around the world and uh, in terms of Australia and the COVID overlay that we've all been challenged through in the last 18 months. It's great to be out uh, talking BIM MEPOLs again and particularly talking about the effects on innovation that uh, the initiative is having. Um, really important, Scott covered off a few uh, changes in his address just around the uh, restructuring and resourcing of the BIM MEPOLs initiative. Um, it's an exciting phase, definitely the maturing of the initiative over a long period of time and really um, moving into the next phase with significant resources being added to the initiative as well as that extension to the full end-to-end -end capability of the digital environment. I think from um, feedback through industry over recent times is really feeling this transformation that we've been talking about for many years and how the, the real end-to-end -end, uh, whole of life approach and ultimately the digital engineering sitting behind that, whether that's been through the design phase, the construction phase, the transition into facilities management and operation, it's just really exciting to see the take up as, as planned, as in line with the strategic development of the initiative. Uh, I think the importance that has come through in that is the standards that BIM MEPOS have created, the foundation. Um, when we're looking at collaboration and, and the ability for um, all sorts of stakeholders and businesses to be part of um, project delivery, service delivery, delivery, FM management, the standards that BIM MEPOS have provided through um, the digital content, um, through um, having the, the key initiatives around simple things like naming convention and um, parameters um, have been um, really the fundamental to making sure that we are not all off developing our own um, standards and the fact that we could all um, land on a platform and, and work through it together. Um, we also have a, not only have we got a, a great variety of countries attending today's um, session, we've also got a real cross section of the industry. So from designers to consultants to um, traditional contractors to service providers to facility managers, um, we're really um, looking forward to today's uh, update and um, we're pretty confident that you'll have something to take away from um, today's update. So to you all, welcome. Um, in closing, before I hand, out, hand off to Shannon to really kick off the uh, agenda, can also just pay a particular um, thanks to the BIM MEPOS project board. It's certainly been a challenging time as we work through the COVID uh, challenges of the last 18 months, but to Ian Pearce, to Warwick Stannis, uh, particularly to you both, thank you for your technical input and stewardship um, through the project board, and also to Andrew uh, O'Connor, as well as the participations through Shannon and, and Scott Williams. So um, it's been a privilege to um, welcome you here today and hand back to you, Shannon. Thank you, Russell and Scott. Uh, as touched on by Scott and Russell, there has been significant change for BIM MEPOS this year. While we continue to work with the most experienced and knowledgeable people in the industry to help guide the technical development of, BIM, of the BIM MEPOS initiative, AMCA Australia is now managing the subscriptions, manufacturer content services, technical support and training all internally. We've really seen a, a significant increase in the updates and the development rates since these changes were implemented. But just as important as the improved development rates is our engagement with industry. I personally look forward to more conversations with you about, the BIM Mep, how, about how BIM MEPOS can support your digital workflows and looking forward to collaborating to pro prioritise our areas of development. In fact, to reinforce our indus industry support and backing up what Scott just mentioned, the AMCA Australia National Board has approved the addition of an, of an internal resource to join AM, AMCA Australia and work with the BIM MEPOS team to assist with training, education and consulting services. This will complement and align with AMCA Australia's Certificate 4 in Engineering Drafting course, which is a national, nationally accredited program, prov providing industry specific training for drafters in the air conditioning and mechanical services industry. AMCA members recognise BIM as a framework to, to diversify and innovate their design and drafting departments. So we really look forward to supporting AMCA members and the broader industry for training and education needs. So just turning our attention back to some of our recent developments, 
Uh, and as Scott mentioned earlier this year, in June, we created and launched an entire new website. So the new website provides a more user-friendly experience to easily access the BIMFOS product data templates and BIMFOS content for managing your data and modeling needs. Under the technical leadership of Warwick Stannis and great technical guidance from Ian Pearce, plus support from others in the industry, including Christian, we have created and released an entirely new BIMFOS Revit template alongside a new update of our shared parameter file. The new template was launched at the end of June and included a bunch of new updates. I'm going to get a little bit technical here, but it includes a new start view, guidance notes, new sample view, new annotations and tags, a new mechanical legend, new schedules, which have all been added or updated. And the schedules are now fully aligned to the BIMFOS product data templates with multiple classification codes, including Omniclass, Uniclass, NatSpec work section numbers, and VBIS classification product codes. And while the other classification systems are suitable in a design phase, VBIS provides a comprehensive asset classification system in the operational phase. It also provides a mechanism for locating and connecting data related to assets in disparate systems. So you can start to see we're, we're really inclusive of lots of different options there and, and, and working with lots of different groups to, to help develop the product data templates and standards of BIMFOS. The schedules are also aligned to our generic content, manufacturer content and commissioning activities. The template contains all new industry standard mechanical ductwork systems, accessories, fittings, insulation and linings. It also has new mechanical piping system, pipe types, fittings, insulation, and even on the electrical side, we've added new cable trays, fittings with, built -in, with a built-in clearance zone. And a lot of this you'll be able to see in uh, our technical demonstrations later in the day. See these things in practice. So in addition to the new content mentioned, we are already actually working on, a, on another template update, which will be released in the coming days. So that update will improve the schedules to host content with the correct LOD or level of development of the, of the objects and the correct LOI or level of information relating to those generic and manufacturer objects. The schedules will also contain the relevant product type through smarter schedule filtering and it will also have some minor graphical and system name updates. So if you're wondering what all this means, it basically saves you time by streamlining and minimising the amount of work for modelers and documentation. This would be very difficult to achieve on a consistent basis without an industry standard methodology. And I'd inv invite you to tune in to see Christian provide a demonstration, a demonstration of the new template a little later today. In addition to the new website and new template, we've also released a major update to our BIMFOS fabrication content in early October. The updated fabrication content includes a list too long to cover here, but I can tell you there were 19 significant updates, 20 new services and fittings added, and that's in addition to a cleanup of the library structure and the appearance of the object images. You'll have to again tune into our fabrication session a little later today to learn about the benefits and the improvements being made. We've also been working on updating our generic families to fully align with the latest BIMFOS specifications and parameter sets for mechanical and electrical requirements. The parameter sets in the generic objects also align to the schedules in the BIMFOS template. And then again, tune in to see these in action. So this is stuff we've got ready to go in our next release. You'll also note we've been having many conversations with manufacturers to follow the same approach as the generic objects where the data sets align to the BIMFOS specifications and the schedules in the template. Our first assignment re will release updated Grumfos content by the end of November. Um, and Christian will show you a sneak peek of one of the Grumfos families working in conjunction with the schedules in the BIMFOS template. So this, again, really will save you a lot of time with entering and, and documenting your families and schedules in the template. Now turning our attention to the BIMFOS product data templates, uh, we'd like to highlight that these have been created from the BIMFOS product specifications 
to allow clients, builders, consultants and contractors to establish consistent asset information requirements. The product data templates have been developed to provide simple to use structured data sets in a simple Microsoft Excel format to support industry engagement through each phase of the project delivery and transition to operation. They contain BIMEPOS parameters nominated in the product specifications and are mirrored in the generic and manufacturer schedules and families. Again, you'll see a live demonstration of this in our template session a little later. So I'm just going to uh, play a video here. And so this here, this video is a look at one of our product data template in, templates in detail, which is the axial fan. Uh, the first tab in our product data templates includes a complete list of all parameters related to a particular product. Um, at the top, hey Chris, can we just, uh, at the top we see the product specification information and product classification codes for Uniclass, Omniclass and the uh, other classification systems including VBIS. So from there we start to see we've got a list of identity parameters um, to cover design, um, manufacturers and asset information. We then start to flow into our performance and quality parameters. Um, from there, we start to see the product specific parameters related to the manufacturers. And then eventually the commissioning and handover, completion and handover parameters. Um, the second tab there starts to look at the design related parameters. Um, and this is in line and in conjunction with the generic objects that BIMEPOS creates and also the schedules for generic design. The third tab there starts to look at the manufacturer content and aligning the data sets to in line with uh, the manufacturer's needs. And finally, we have our commissioning schedules and our supplier details. So as mentioned a moment ago, these parameters are, min are mirrored in the BIMEPOS Revit families and schedules. You've probably worked out that the second tab relates to the generic content, the third tab relates to manufacturer content. So I know that's a little bit technical and I apologise for showing some sp spreadsheets through this uh, presentation, but I think we think that uh, it's a good way to show you what ha the development path that we've been on and the level of detail that we're going into. So you can also see that this approach allows a lot of flexibility based on the product data templates and how we've structured them. For clients and project teams to discuss and agree on asset information requirements related to each product and can add to or remove parameters should the standard BIMEPOS schedules require changes depending on the project. So it really allows that flexibility for the, project, for the clients and the project team to discuss and agree, agree on these asset information requirements um, you know, during their discussions and meetings. Yeah. And the, the other point there too is that this also allows these discussions and agreements to take place before the modelling has commenced. It could also provide a foundation for clients and project teams to agree, to agree on what information is captured in the model and what is held outside of the model in a, in a database. So over time we expect that the data contained in the templates will ultimately be exchanged with databases where it can be used for, for a wide range of purposes. And after our announcement at last year's Con Construction Innovation Forum, I can tell you we con we're continuing our collaboration with NatSpec in the background to align and host the BIMEPOS product data sets on the NatSpec BIM properties generator. And we'll be able to make some further announcements about this in the coming months. Uh, so far we've mostly covered the recent updates and a few of the things we've been working on. Um, but what I can tell you is that our focus in the coming months will be on updating more of these product data templates, releasing the next update of the BIMEPOS template itself, more generic and more manufacturer families through lots of conversations we're having at the moment and syncing all that BIMEPOS parameter sets 
to the schedules to support and align those updates and that, that, that workflow of using those particular objects and tools. We mentioned in our plan for supporting training, education and consulting, so we're really excited about that. And there's one more really innovative and exciting project we've begun working on in relation to our product data templates. I can't say too much now, you'll have to attend our Construction Innovation Forum, uh, which is set for April 28 and 29 to hear about that exciting project. As you may be aware, AMCA regularly supports studies and publications. Another project where we can provide more information, which certainly makes for interesting reading, is that through the AMCA Australia, our members supported and contributed to the Dodge Data and Analytics Report on accelerating digital transformation through BIM. And some of the key themes to emerge from that study show that the percentage of a company's projects where they use BIM correlates directly to the progress of their digital transformation and their return on investment. An even more pron pronounced correlation appears when companies leverage model-based data to facilitate analysis, improve decision-making, and enhance productivity and collaboration by driving integrated digital workflows. They also found the use of cloud services and a common standard data environment for digital workflows also results in greater benefits. This report makes for great reading and will be accessible through our BIMEPOS website later this week. So you can see there there's continual development in many, many regions and many, many areas, all looking at their digital transformation strategies. And BIMEPOS is, you know, we think well placed to continue delivering these tools and services for the industry. So lastly, in closing this morning, this morning's first session, we just wanted to mention that we continue to see significant interest and uptake at all levels. There's widespread acknowledgement that establish, establishing consistent digital engineering and BIM methodologies offers the most opportunities for organisations and industry in the future. So we're really looking forward to seeing this space evolve so if there are still organisations out there waiting to advance their digital transformation strategies, there's plenty of evidence to show the benefits and those who have made the switch early are reaping those benefits and have no intention of turning back to traditional ways. 